So we're back. As normal as could be, this doctor is. Good looking guy, pitch black hair, white stripe, blue eyes. Um, and he says to her, he goes, okay, um, I'm glad you're doing great. He goes, do you mind if I check out the baby? She goes, not at all. Um, she, he goes, oh, the baby's got good coloring. I'm talking, normal doctor, nice looking guy, nice doctor. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, it seems that you're doing great. He goes, um, congratulations on your new baby boy. Do you know what you're gonna name him? And she picked the name David out. And very briefly, briefly, she thought she saw just a flash of anger go across his yeah. face. But she thought, well, it's nighttime. I'm tired. Maybe, um, you know, whatever. So he goes, okay, we'll have a great night. And, you know, he's beautiful. Enjoy your family. You'll probably be discharged tomorrow. He walks to the door. Puts his hand on the door. Opens up the door. He's facing to leave out the door he turns around and looks at her and he is bald and wrinkled with no hair she looks down at his hand on the doorknob and it's with those pointy nubbly pale pasty white fingernails and he looks at her and he says i sure enjoyed fucking the hell right out of you i'll come back for my son be ready yeah and walked out the door <clears throat> at that moment she knew that what she had thought was a nightmare was real but she looked at that baby and she could tell she knew somehow that that baby was good like yeah. the baby wasn't bad she didn't know what to do. She, she was trying to protect him. I have to say, I think she was a little bit like me where she doesn't panic in a situation, which thank God, because could you imagine if that was you and you started to panic and you like hit your nurse call button? <laughs> they come in, sister. yeah, and you tell them that. They're thinking you have postpartum depression and you went insane. They're taking your baby from you. Yeah. She knew that. Like that automatically registered with her not to do that about... Five minutes later, a nurse came in. At this point, she don't know who the hell's walking in her room because when the first guy came in, she thought it was a doctor. Come to find out it's Satan himself. So now this nurse comes in and the nurse stands at the end of the bed. She picks up the chart. She puts the chart down. She says to her, you and your baby are going to be fine. Look at me. And all of a sudden, this nurse in a nurse's uniform went from looking like a nurse to looking like a golden light with An beautiful angel. skin and red lips, but no wings. The angel did not have wings, but down at her side was a um, oh, customer's emailing me. Oh, um, well, they're a nice customer. I like them. Anyway, so they um, at, down at her side was this sword, flaming sword, flaming sword. But not causing fire. It was just kind of glowing. Yeah. You knew it was a flaming sword. Now, how do I know all this? Here's how I know. Because he told me. He told me when Satan took over his body, Satan's mind is like an eternal, infinite hall. And whoever's body he takes over has access to their own files. Not really files, but... Memory memory particles and a memory particle I actually have a memory particle piece here um, which is that it's that it's that one right there actually but um, it's a memory particle and it's it's no bigger than a, a fleck of dust but it holds every single memory your entire soul has ever had and he just went right to where he was. This is how he found out about his mother, his father, where they lived and everything. Because while they 
dumped him because she told her husband her husband believed her um because the thing is this he saw everything like i'm telling you he was living it he saw it there was nothing else he could do he has satan in his body he can't even escape his body but he saw his mother tell his father what happened and he never even batted an eye he looked at her and he said you know what that night that you and i were having sex or however he said it to her he said i felt something grab my body and push it through what felt like a marshmallow like a curtain that would feel like if you touched a marshmallow that lady's in here again did you know that fine steve by the table no <laughs> i think the um the the dead lady in here is fascinated with her <laughs> well we were both the same age yeah but i mean i didn't tell you anything about her did i to tell the people did i tell you that this house had any kind of spirit in it or who no, it was no i thought this was clear i thought that there was nobody well i knew there was like uh things outside and yeah you know stuff like that but you came to me and said uh dd uh there's a woman there and I was like, I and just then, asked you, yeah. was there anybody here? Because I just kept waking up, you know, like, you know, like how you just kind of feel someone right there. Yeah. I thought you were standing over me. No, all the time. I thought no. it was you. It's the lady. It's the lady. She, she really bothers Hachi. Hachi's very sensitive to um, spirits. Yeah. I don't know if crabs is going to be, but, but Hachi is my clone. She <laughs> is my clone. I, I, I could have popped that child out. But anyway, um, personality and all, I'll tell you. Is that true, Steve? Yeah. Okay, so anyway. Um, yeah, so She doesn't take after the other side of the family at all. No, that's right. She hash takes after me all the way. But anyway, um, so she told her husband about it because they have a very good relationship, very loving relationship. And she was never going to tell her husband about it, but she had to because she knew she had to hide the child. Because the angel had said to her, you're going to be okay. But there was also a telepathic connection that let her know to get rid of the child. Not kill it, but hide it. She just felt And she had to tell her husband. Because her husband's going to wonder where his child went. Yeah. So she said, look, blah, blah, blah. And he said to her, I felt something push my body like through a veil. And the veil felt like a marshmallow. He, he goes, it was like a material. He goes, I was shoved in it. He goes, I couldn't get out. He goes, but I thought we were having such amazing sex that I was actual traveling or whatever, he said. You know, like I was somewhere else, left my body. And he goes, and I never wanted to say anything to you because I didn't want you to think I was crazy. And she goes, well, I never said anything to you because I didn't want you to think I was crazy. And she told him what happened and he believed her 100%. And she goes, we have to hide the child. We have to get rid of the child. Well, he had a nephew who worked at the grocery store who was responsible for taking the trash out every night at a certain time. But he had quit. He didn't work there anymore. He had actually moved out of state. But he remembers him telling him about how, yeah, they leave me here. It's kind of creepy out there. I don't want to go out there. So the reason that the baby was left there is because they knew between a certain time every night somebody walked out there. So the baby okay, would be found. So that's why they did it. And they didn't want to do it too convenient, like a hospital or whatever, because of cameras. So the only place they could do it, and their brain at the time of panic, because he had said, I'll be back, was to get rid of the child. And they knew that it was either a demon or Satan at the time. And they knew, she knew telepathically from the angel that there was a time period where she could get rid of this child, put him somewhere where he would be safe. And it did. It worked out. He was adopted. Of course, they didn't want to give up their child, but they really didn't. They didn't have a choice. They didn't want him to come back because they didn't know. They never knew what was in store for the child. They just knew that Satan had sex with her, and they didn't know what was going to happen. The angel didn't tell them. They didn't know. They only knew they had to hide the child. As far as I know, they could have thought their child was going to be killed. We'll be right back. 